Year to date, I'm up 16% in net returns from my automated trading system. Meanwhile, the S&P is down 18%. How did I do this? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm outperforming the S&P 500 year to date as of Q1 2022, my portfolio of strategies, and my plan for the rest of the year. So I just got this in the mail today from Interactive Brokers, which shows you my Q1 returns from my automated trading systems. Interactive Brokers is my brokerage where my automated trading systems submit futures trades, both long and short, from my portfolio of strategies. As of this recording, the S&P is down 18%. And I'm up 16%, meaning that I'm outperforming the S&P by 34% in terms of net returns. So if the S&P is down 18% and I'm up 16%, how am I able to do this? How am I able to make money if the market goes down? Well, simply put, I have long and short strategies where I have automated trading systems that bet if the market's going to go up or down. And if it does go down, I can potentially make money depending on my strategy. The benefit of futures trading is it's easy to go long and short. So I can reduce my risk and smoothen my equity curve by having both long and short strategies, assuming they're good strategies and they're performing in the current market. Most retail investors buy and hold index funds like the S&P 500, and there's nothing wrong with that. Overall, they tend to go up and eventually you'll be green. But there is periods of time where there are red, like we're seeing right now where the S&P is down 18% Q1. I'm able to outperform that by having long and short strategies that can make money if the market goes down and being diversified in other strategies in other markets like commodities. Oil, for example, is performing really well for me and a great hedge in terms of doing well in a bear market. Here is one of my strategy's recent trades. It buys long when a channel up pattern has been detected and goes short on four consecutive red bars. In this recent trade, it made a profit on both the long and short side, reducing my risk, smoothing my equity curve, and making money in both directions. Now, this doesn't always work great. In this another example, we see a loss on both sides where it went long, it lost money, it tried to go short, it lost money. It doesn't always work out. So how did I come up with these strategies? Basically, I have an idea for a strategy where I want to add to my portfolio a uncorrelated strategy. So I think of a symbol, I think of a market I want to explore, and then I backtest usually for the last 14 years, generally from 2008 until today, because that's what my data provider allows me to. Generally for each strategy, I want a long and short signal so I can reduce my risk, smooth my equity curve and benefit from both sides. Then I usually will backtest for about four years, usually about 2008, 2012. And if I like the results, I'll then do a walk forward optimization from 2008 to 2022. Basically, I'll optimize on the last two years and test on the last year out of sample. Once those results are in and I'm happy with the metrics like my average trade profit and net profit to drawdown ratio, I will then put my numbers in a Monte Carlo analysis and see if I randomize the order of trades if it affects the results. If it does, I kind of can that strategy and move on to a new one. But if it then passes that result, then I run it in a SIM account or a paper trading account for about a month to two months and see how it performs in the current market. And if it's making money, that's when I run it live. Now, all my strategies for all my portfolios, I use this process to generate strategy ideas and to test them and kind of give them a grade, give them a report card uh, before I run them live. You know, I'm very vigorous in my testing. I don't wanna run bad performing strategies and potentially lose money. I really wanna take my time and test them. I have strategies in multiple markets, obviously the indexes like the S&P 500 and NASDAQ, I have oil and gold strategies and currently testing some currency future strategies with the Australian dollar, the British pound dollar and Canadian dollar, US dollar uh, futures as well. Diversifying into other markets as an algo trader is crucial for long-term success. You really can't rely on one market to see consistent profits. If you have a strategy that just runs on S&P 500 futures, you'll make money some of the time, but not all the time. And those times when you're not making money, having uncorrelated diversified strategies will help reduce your risk. Obviously, I'm very happy with my returns of being up 16% Q1 2022, and I hope they continue for the rest of the year, but there's no guarantees. I don't know what the market's gonna do tomorrow. I could lose all my money tomorrow. I could break even by the end of the year, or maybe I continue. I don't know, I can't tell the future, but I'm very optimistic with my strategies. I've put a lot of time into testing them, and I'm constantly adding and removing new strategies based on my testing, previous performance, and other metrics and factors. So very optimistic, but 
I do know that, you know, it may not continue for the rest of the year. I may lose money at the end of the year. I may make more. Maybe I'll break even. I don't know. I can't tell the future, but I'm definitely more optimistic and I enjoy doing this and, and building diversified strategies, testing strategy ideas, finding new signals that we can implement. It's just something I love and do. I missed a lot of opportunities with not having strategies on wheat and corn, and I'm working on those right now as well. There's definitely a lot of markets I haven't explored and want to kind of get my toes wet in. I think that there's still a lot of opportunities out there in markets I'm not trading and need to just spend time building more strategies, testing more strategy ideas in different markets so I can have a better overall portfolio. I love what I do. I love building automated trading systems, finding new markets, finding creative ways to enter and exit different positions and different markets and different diversification opportunities. It's just something I really enjoy and will probably do the rest of my life. Um, I spend a lot of time doing this, but really enjoy every aspect of building automated trading systems for futures. And I think you have to love, really love what you do to kind of keep pushing through the hard times, the drawdowns, the red days, red months, red years uh, to truly be successful. Anyways, I hope you guys found value in this video and we'll see you next week.